up, it's Phil from Pitbull Exposed, and today we're going to be talking about our part two of the neck video. So in the last video we discussed the front of the neck, in this video we're going to discuss the rear part. So we're just going to jump right into it. The rear part, I personally find, is just as important as the front, because one, you can use way more weight, and two, it just gives you that 3D look. So a lot of people, they have the front, they don't have like any thickness in the back. They don't have that tie-in with the straps in the upper back and the rear belt. So today we're going to show you how to get that. Now, I want to talk to you guys about what most people do for their uh, for the rear part of the neck. And I'm personally not a big advocate at all because you can't lift much weight. The warming potential is very limited. It's very uncomfortable. And I'll just show you right now. So most people they lie down on the bench. This. The problem with this is that after two plates, it's extremely hard to hold. So it's like, there's no way you're gonna be doing that with three plates. And if you're just gonna settle for high reps, then it's like, you're pretty much defeating the purpose. Like high reps have their place, but you still need some low reps in the equation if you wanna take the back of your neck to the next level. Yeah, I got a solution for you guys, the neck harness. Now, it's very important that you guys invest in a good neck harness from the get-go, because you don't wanna make the same mistake I made where you're just buying these 20 30 dollar neck harnesses and you just break every two months so this neck harness is comfortable i personally like it. it's been lasting pretty long for me i'm not affiliated with it but you put it on your head it's adjustable and all you do boom you look into the middle you get in position Okay, so with a good neck harness, you're gonna be able to use a lot of weight. So I've gone up to four plates on this and it hasn't snapped, which is good. And so the loading potential is high, so you'll be able to overload the back of your neck a lot more. Now, this is a lot different from a four-way neck machine when you're just doing this, because this is a free-weighted movement. The, the four-way neck machine is that it's a fixed range of motion. Whereas when I'm doing with the neck harness, I could do, I could kind of like, uh, include more muscle fibers because I'm working more stabilized in the neck and you also get a better stretch in my opinion so with that being said a lot of people do neck harness work but they don't get too much out of it and I'm gonna explain some of the mistakes with some tips that you can use and apply to yourself to get more out of your neck training okay. the mistake that I see people make is that they turn the neck extension into a neck lift so they're not extend. They're not. They're not going. They're not curling their neck and then extending. They're pretty much just coming up. They're just keeping their whole, whole torso uh, vertical, and that's not going to hit the back of your neck very effectively, in my opinion. So they do something like this. And that the problem with this is that you're not getting the stretch in the back of the neck. So what you really want to do. You see how the back of my neck is in the stretch position? And then, boom, flex it for a sec, put it down. Now, as weights get heavier, I personally like to start from a dead stop on each rep. And I also feel like it makes the neck harness last longer. You have, you have a few, four plates hanging from the neck harness. Over time, if you're not deloading at the bottom, it's gonna start ripping. Now, as far as the rep ranges are concerned, I'm personally a big believer in doing a multitude of different rep ranges for the back of your neck, and actually all sides of the neck, for that matter. So, if you have a really good neck harness, I'd actually recommend, like if you're more advanced, you could even work up to singles, triples, fives. If you're just starting off though, I wouldn't recommend going under 20 reps. I just want you to like, get the form down, you know, strict. And speaking of strict, as you get more advanced in your neck training, maybe you've been doing it for a few years, I'm personally a big believer in using a bit of momentum, a bit of body sway, just to get the weight from point A to point B. You could even use your arms, put them on the side, and just kind of like feel the bit of your arms to push. That's gonna help you get more weight out there. This is obviously more for like the advanced guys, you know, if you're if you're a beginner, slow and controlled, all that stuff. This is personally my favorite exercise for training the back of my neck. 
And I know some of you guys are probably think, thinking, oh, what about wrestler bridges? And I've tried those in the past, and I've seen a lot of success with that lift with a lot of people. Like, I think Mike Tyson was really big on it. A lot of fighters are big on it. And especially if you're at like a heavy weight, like you're over like 220 and you're doing it, you're for sure gonna make some progress. But me personally, I just, I just don't like it. I'm not. Better stretch, better contraction. I just like the way it feels on my head. I feel like as you get heavier, and you're just doing these neck bridges, it's just you just get more headaches. And like, if you could do them and if you're getting something out of them, I definitely recommend that you just keep doing it. But you should, if you're trying, if, if neck mass or neck strength is the goal, I don't see why it would hurt to have a neck harness. So that's the end of this video. Let me know what you think and let me know your favorite exercise for training the back of the neck.